Bao. This is Kai Opua 5 with the Kawani Foundation, bringing you another segment of Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. And we're here, as you can see the backdrop, we're behind the palace. We've been kind of moving around the palace from one place to another today. And so we're very pleased to have with us a, a young person who's been really working hard and volunteering. I'm, I'm assuming it's volunteering. It is. Uh, and we'd like to kind of talk with uh, Shelley Muneoka mm -hmm. uh, and let her kind of tell us about herself and what she's doing. I've seen her in several venues and uh, seems to be right in there in the middle. And so we're very interested in the young people who are supporting all the things Hawaiian issues and so forth. Mm -hmm. Shelley, mahalo for being with us. Thank uh -huh. you. Spending your Monday or Sunday morning with us here, and uh, we appreciate it very much. Uh, I saw you at the UH, the the panel discussions, and you were recording them. Huh? Mm -hmm. And why don't you give us a little background on yourself? Uh, I saw you re were recording there, but what does that mean? How did you wind up getting roped into that? And uh, why were you doing that? And why are you doing what you're doing? And who are you? <laughs> <laughs> roped into it. That's a, that's a good way to describe my role yeah. as recorder. Yeah. Um, actually, I guess the, where we should probably start is back a few months at the statehood protest. Okay. Um, and leading up to the protest march, um, the the idea of well, first somebody was proposing to burn the American flag, which I staunchly opposed, yeah. and then somebody had proposed um, cutting the star, and then somebody in the meeting said, you know, the OPO should decide what happens to that star, mm -hmm. which is a great metaphor for um, you know passing the torch here as to um, we're going to be picking this up. Are we talking about the fiftieth star? Is That's that the one. Yeah. That's the one. Mm -hmm. So um, in the end, we ended up cutting the last star and burning it at the protest. And of course, this is big news, strong reaction mm -hmm. on both sides. Um, so both sides, which, which sides are we talking about now? Um, the sides that thought that that was, on the one hand, disrespectful. Mm -hmm. And um, even within the movement, some people were saying, you know, you did more, or maybe not with it, but that you, I, we did more harm than good. Mm -hmm. um, that you know is tasteless and hurtful, and we're you know only serving to alienate the two sides, and you know so there's some very strong reactions on that side. On the other side, I heard a lot of you know, thank you for giving us a voice, thank you for doing it non-violently, mm -hmm. um, you know that for many reasons, we all have reasons um, that some people cannot do that kind of action. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for doing that you, for all the people you, who couldn't. You, you folks who are going ahead and doing that anyway. Something yeah. they would have liked to have done, right? But Which for I was whatever reason can't. Surprised at that expression. I was really appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of the my big bursting onto the scene. Mm -hmm. But I felt strongly about Hawaii's independence. I'd say my whole life, mm -hmm. probably, and I don't really know where I got that from. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, so after that, um, in response to that, as a way to offer public forum, we now do monthly meetings at um, Native Books, Namia Hawaii, um, one Sunday a month. And we try and focus on drawing youth into the movement. Um, mm -hmm. But we found that more than answering questions, all we can do is ask questions, most of the young people. So right. it's been to our great benefit and honor to have Kupuna come and share with us. and. Um, an opportunity for us to ask him questions um, for guidance and things like that. So I can't recall his name, but he was actually sharing about how growing up he was a um, military pilot in Vietnam and that he personally walked targets into Makua mm -hmm. and that um, that he wasn't thinking as a Hawaiian person then, that he was only informed as an army pilot right. and that how now his the rest of his life is devoted to demilitarizing Hawaii. Um, and he shared with us his experience in assisting with the deoccupation of Germany and giving us perspective about the importance of having America recognize Hawaii as an occupied state. Um, and that once that happens, that there is 
much legal um, responsibility for them to not only concede that point, but also to assist in restoring um, Hawaii as it was prior to the occupation. Mm -hmm. um, so he really gave us a lot of insight in that way. And then there was another kupuna who went by the name Po'onui, um, and he gave us a lot of historical context and Many of us on the panel were talking about how, like, for us in our families, how um, neg strong negative reactions for our kupuna on this earth have been painful for us, but important. Um, and so his sharing with us, their sharing with us that they supported us was very important and helpful to us. And sharing the painful memories of being a Hawaiian in their um, growing up helped us understand the context which our grandparents grew up in. Um, so to have more sensitivity and appreciation and um, to really acknowledge that wherever they stand today, mm -hmm. we are able to have a voice and open our mouth and do these things because they were silenced, you know, so um, that was I think that's an important point. Uh, so, and this came up, actually, it was, uh, it was one of the items, the informational items that... Uh, came up during the last panel at UH yesterday. Mm. Uh, but when you talk about a U.S. military person mm. who turned from that mm -hmm. that stance, that, that point of reference in, in his life, who has now come to a point where he's seeing things differently. Yes. Uh, there was some discussion on the last panel yesterday where reference was made to occupation and then what what are the internationally recognized components of mm -hmm. uh, occupation mm -hmm. uh, some of them having to be resistance mm -hmm. you know uh, not not uh, being acquiescent right. to the oppressor or the right. occupier as being important and there was also there was discussion that uh, how could we make that claim that we're occupied when some of the people who are leading our current mm. movement served in the military mm. and the person who was to, <laughs> came back on that said well at that point i didn't know right and so it's uh, where we're, our education is always taking place and so we're not the same people That's we right. were a decade ago or 20 mm -hmm. years ago or last week right because we know more today so that's a good example because it, it mirrors mm -hmm. what we heard yesterday on the panel. I think that's a really interesting example because both sides were not disputing facts. They were agreeing that, okay, you're in the military, and they were both using that as testament to yeah. occupation or non-occupation. Or not um, qualifying as... Yeah. Right, and because to me, well, I guess it's not really occupation, but more like they were talking about psychic colonization. Um, yeah. So buying into... Yeah what was seen as a successful path, um, to me is a testament to, to the fact that um, in that point in time that that was a, a, good, a good way to go. You're working with what you had. Yeah, and I think yeah. we see many young men now who continue on that path. And yeah. I think it's really, really important to not ostracize them mm -hmm. because, you know, we all need to eat and we all need to survive and people do what they have to do. Yeah, and realities of everyday And as he was saying, yeah. some people you just don't know. Yeah. You just don't know, so. Yeah. We've talked about how you've been involved in these discussions at Naomi. Mm -hmm. Are you a student? Are you a student now? Are um, you not a student? I what actually, I graduated in May. You graduated in May? Uh-huh, with a master's degree in social work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not currently working. Um, in any kind of social work capacity, kind of finding um, the bureaucracy of the profession is a little bit um, off-putting to me. I'm trying to find a way to be a little bit further out of the box mm -hmm. than I think was perhaps my original plan. Mm -hmm. So, but I think um, my education in social work will probably serve me well in a social justice movement. Um, yeah, well, I'm trying to think about, not that I know that much about that <laughs> field, but I guess if you're looking at it from the, the state as being a provider mm. versus uh, nonprofits or foundation mm -hmm. versus programs, mm -hmm. funded programs, 
did you do you have a feel for possibly fitting into any of that, or do you, are you rethinking? Well, I'm rethinking. rethinking your... I'm rethinking because um, I don't get myself in trouble here. But I think um, both nonprofit, private, state agencies um, understandably deal very much with like the symptoms of structural problems. Mm -hmm. Um, that are not untied to our movement. Um, mm -hmm. So I am trying to be careful not to s get entrenched in and overwhelmed by the day-to-day -day very serious symptom of our very serious structural problem. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to do, and I have not yet figured out how to do this, is get a little bit further upstream from the problem and to figure out what is causing all of these things that we see, homelessness and you know, drug problems and poverty and you know, on and on and on. Um, I tend to maybe shy away a little bit from, from simply giving somebody a check or giving them food for today, you know, um, and then what happens tomorrow? I mean, you gotta eat every day, right? So, I don't know. It's a big question, so. Looking for kind of a system, systemic approach, maybe. Yeah. Um, well, for me, even just like looking at the problem of food, mm -hmm. um, which. You mean access, availability. Yeah, and, and whether you're rich or poor, everybody needs to eat. And even if you have money to purchase food, mm -hmm. the real reality is that it is a possibility that perhaps that having money one day is not going to be enough to feed you mm -hmm. because of whatever, oil crisis, mm -hmm. or if something happens in our change in status with the U.S. and we're having problems with trade. I don't know what could happen, we don't but... Have access. Yeah. But we understand that you're rethinking your, your future mm -hmm. and how it has to do with what you've trained and studied for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think this, this is an evolution. It's a regular evolution of things. Mm -hmm. And I uh, wish you luck with it. It's kind of a rough time in Hawaii to be, uh, you know, in the job market. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, but it's a challenge that I think is going to uh, maybe give you a, a more fulfilling life as you evolve mm. into whatever your niche is. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's very, very, very cool. And we talked earlier a few minutes ago about the statehood demonstration. Mm. When we talked about the flag and the discussions back and forth as to how to how to communicate the displeasure. <laughs> the displeasure mm -hmm. that the participants had mm -hmm. uh, for this occupation and so forth. And uh, one consideration was to burn the U.S. flag, which mm -hmm. was determined to be inappropriate. inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And then actually wound up cutting the 50th star, mm -hmm. the Hawaii star, out mm -hmm. of the flag. Mm -hmm. why, don't, why don't you give us a little more detail on that? Because, uh, you know, those of you who are intimately involved in it, I think ought to be able to give your side of the story because mm. I don't think it was really well presented, mm. you know, in the press mm -hmm. that came out as to mm -hmm. what, you know, what was behind it and what, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I really appreciate you giving me a chance to um, talk on this. Um, so, the, one of the main reasons why we decided to cut the last star as opposed to bringing the whole flag. I mean, we really wanted to be purposeful and intentional and clear about what our message was. Mm -hmm. So um, unfortunately, it was kind of interpreted as an anti-American act, which we wanted to be clear that it wasn't an anti-American <laughs> act, and we're actually very pro-American value. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a call to the American government to um, behave in accordance to their own stated values. Um, the With the star, I, I think the message really was, you know, that um, this star does not represent true Hawaii. It does not. We feel that it doesn't represent us, um, but that it represents the state of Hawaii, and that we feel that it's been imposed on us, um, and that we are unsatisfied with that with that situation. And um, there was a lot of 
fervor over the disrespect to the American flag by cutting it. And I really wanted people to be aware of the fact that that flag was not dragged. It was mm. not burnt. It was not, you know, it was treated respectfully. Um, which, I mean, I think some people would contend. Um, I... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Well, let me, let me say what occurs to mm. me as you were really talking about this. Um, I guess some people could say that even cutting the 50th star was disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Disrespectful, but if you're if you're devoted to the concept of Hawaii being occupied illegally uh, as a result of an illegal illegal act of war, mm -hmm. that it's inappropriate for that 50th star to be on the U.S. flag. Mm -hmm. It's inappropriate, and mm -hmm. it's essentially to me. If, we're, if those of us who are pro-independence want the restoration of uh, the state of Hawaii, mm -hmm. the deoccupation of mm -hmm. the state of Hawaii, the decolonization, mm -hmm. for the, just to serve all of the different <laughs> arguments, uh, I think it's appropriate and I think it expresses uh, what it is that we want, and that is the U.S. out of Hawaii, right. the Hawaii out of the U.S. Right. And so, uh, unfortunately, I think when these kind of things happen, and you get you get this little flash of media, right? Uh, unless you really set up a, uh, a media objective to make sure that people are aware of why you're doing right. what you're doing, right? Uh, it's hard to counter it because what comes out of uh, an article in the local paper that cites this outrageous act mm -hmm. without any backup right. or any background. So I'm hoping that uh, those who are watching can realize, because, you know, there, there's a real, uh, there's a, a situation of people in Hawaii being torn. You know, we've been occupied right. for so long, or, or you've been assimilated mm -hmm. so so totally almost mm -hmm. uh, that it's uh, like unpatriotic to uh, even right. consider that the U.S. has done anything illegal right i think yep. the attitude was very much like how dare you bite the hand that feeds you yeah. how dare you not appreciate what all that america has has right. done for you yeah. um be grateful for be what grateful it. for what has happened and yeah. you know another word for grateful is is appreciate and to be quite frank i don't appreciate yeah. what happened here yeah. um and i like to draw the parallel between what we've heard from oral history accounts during the staging of the supposed annexation um, here at Iolani Palace, the celebration mm -hmm. that um, the Hawaiian flag was lowered and cut up and given away as souvenirs to attendants. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that, that either one was right, mm -hmm. but I would like to draw the distinct difference in that the Hawaiian flag was not theirs to cut. Mm -hmm. This American flag has been imposed on us. You have said mm -hmm. you're an American citizen. Here is, you know, so to me, it's very, very different. Um, but I really challenge people and I, I'm not going to argue against having a gut reaction mm -hmm. to seeing your flag cut, mm -hmm. but I want to um, encourage and challenge people to take that emotional reaction and to understand that Hawaiians have felt that when it happened to our flag. Mm -hmm. We continue to feel that when we look around and we see mm -hmm. occupied situations or um, injustices going on, that it's the same fire and fervor for your country and love for your country. Um, well, I, I can imagine. You know, I wasn't. I was away, so I wasn't in mm -hmm. on all those meetings. And but I imagine there was some pretty heated discussion uh, mm -hmm. when you started talking about how you were going to, uh, what you were going to do to, mm -hmm. to demonstrate and communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, and the fact that it came down to the flag was, uh, was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's hard to have a dispassionate discussion on something like this, you know, because it is, it is a gut, a gut thing. Don't yes. trample on my flag, right, you know. Right, right. But uh, people have to understand, the U.S. patriots have to understand that there's Hawaiian patriotism too. Right. You know, we have, uh, we, I think we have the right ourselves to, uh, you know, demand respect ourselves. Right. 
So I think it's a, it's a really good example of a greater struggle for all of us, which is, you know, that we've been raised to be Malie and to be, you know, olu olu about things. But, you know, when you are upset, mm -hmm. we've been somewhat trained to be quiet yeah. about it. So I think there's a big struggle of, am I violating my own values mm -hmm. in doing this? Mm -hmm. Or am I violating my own values by not doing this? Yeah. You know, right. um, and not just actions like this, but being involved in this yeah. in general. Well, we've got, we've got societal dynamics going on. Sure. And we have generational. Yes. And we have generational issues of, yes. from my generation, I mean, my parents, mm -hmm. uh, my parents' parents. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, there was there was this suppression, you know, yes. and there was, and there still is today. You know, yes. you don't don't speak up. You know, yeah. keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And and I think it's an issue that's got to break out. And I think these demonstrations, I wouldn't necessarily call them protests, but I guess there's a protest elements to it. Mm. Uh, we don't like what was done, so right. what we're saying is airing it out and, and protesting it. If you don't express your displeasure, your frustration, I mean, right. how, how, is the, how is the oppressor or the occupier supposed to know right. that we don't like what's going on? Right. And as was mentioned in some of the uh, discussions yesterday at the, at the panel, uh, if you don't resist, everybody just kind of thinks you agree with it. Right? Right. So I appreciate very much uh, what you've done. and. And I'm, I'm totally optimistic about you folks who are coming, mm -hmm. coming in and carrying this stuff forward because you come better armed than we were, mm -hmm. just as we are better, more knowledgeable and better armed mm -hmm. than our, our, uh, our parents and mm -hmm. grandparents. So, you know, I, I look onward and upward. Mm -hmm. I think good things are going to happen, and I, I look forward to you being right in the middle of it all. <laughs> so, and I thank you very much for being with us, Shelley. Mm -hmm. Thank you for spending your Sunday morning here sure. with us. It's a beautiful place to be, but mm. I know you might have other things to do. <laughs> but thank you for expressing your your fervor mm. and your dedication to the cause. Mahalo. Yeah. Mm. Mahalo. Yeah. And mahalo to you folks mm -hmm. for, uh, for tuning in. Maybe uh, if you had a different perspective on what transpired at the <laughs> statehood thing, maybe now you understand a little bit better. Kaiopua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation and the element of the Hawaii, Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network. See you next time on Hui Ho. Hello.